get our first detail on uh, literally within the next 30 seconds. For your own safety, we hope everyone is seated because, as Rachel <laughs> said, these are these are some real closings coming up starting at the top of this next hour. And for that, we're going to swing outside to what we've always affectionately referred to as home ice advantage. It's 7 o'clock in the east, and here are the first projections of election night 2016. In the state of Georgia, we are calling it too close to call. 16 electoral votes. Both parties were fascinated like a hurricane with a last minute wobble before coming on shore. Both parties want it very badly. In Virginia, ditto 13 electoral votes. Too early to call. Simply not enough vote, though we're told Clinton is in an early lead. Here is the first projection in the Trump column of decision 2016. That is the state of India home obviously of his running mate Mike Pence the governor there currently 11 electoral votes Indiana we are projecting goes to Donald Trump as does Kentucky eight electoral votes there that's two in a row for Donald Trump we also have the first projected state for Hillary Clinton and look of all places it's Bernie Sanders Vermont three electoral votes but the first nonetheless our electoral uh, temperature if you will all evening long we're going to be uh, tracking up the side of our building South Carolina just added uh, too early to call though Donald Trump in an early lead too early to call means we simply don't know enough uh, and down onto the ice we go the race Race to 270. It's three for Clinton, 19 for Trump. We don't have much red or much blue quite yet, but in a little while, it'll look much different. The rink will. And there you have our Again, first call. Re reiterating those two very interesting calls right at the top there. Georgia, too close to call. Uh, Virginia, too early to call with Hillary Clinton in the lead. South Carolina, also too early to call with Donald Trump in the lead. It's worth just reiterating what the difference is between too close and too early. With too early, unless you're getting a, a, an indication from the from the from the news desk, from the elections desk, about who is in the lead. Otherwise, too early means absolutely nothing in terms of how this might end up. It means we just don't have enough information. With too close, we do have information, just not enough to actually make a projection. I want to take a look uh, inside here in our big wall at some of the Senate races, the early uh, important name oh, Senate races where we have projections. Recognize Rand Paul from the Republican primary process. He is uh, returning to the U.S. Senate, uh, Republican representing the state of Kentucky. Uh, Tim Scott is going back to the United States Senate, South South Carolinian, Republican, and in Vermont. Um, what's projected to be a victory of about 30 or so points for Pat Leahy. He'll be heading back the veteran Democrat from the state of Vermont. Um, and the United States Senate is going to be a moving target all night long. Chuck Todd is uh, pretty convinced that if we uh, determine control of the Senate, it will be an hour followed by an a.m. and not a p.m. <laughs> and it'll bear tomorrow's date and not today's. Steve Kornacki over at the board. Uh, to our viewers, we've been alerted to the first real numbers out of the state of Florida. As you may know, there's the main portion of the state of Florida. Then there's the returns from the western end, the Florida panhandle. But these are uh, real numbers. Again, pay attention to that number in the upper right-hand corner. Two percent of the vote in. We have a long to go. Uh, our coverage will continue after this break. So just to review, for our viewers just joining us, we've had our 7 o'clock closings. Here are in gold on the board the 7.30 closings, and 7.30 has arrived. We have uh, the first uh, return will be Ohio to close to call. Uh, valuable, valuable 18 electoral votes. North Carolina, we were just discussing it, too early to call. Simply not enough raw result in. West Virginia, on the other hand, gets added to the Trump pile. Five electoral votes. Speaking of electoral votes, let's see where they stack up. The night is young. There's our electoral vote uh, thermometer there. Donald Trump in the lead, 24 to 3. Of course, 270 needed to go up and over. The races were watching. Just wanted to let you know where.
where they are. State of Georgia, still too close to call. A very early percentage of raw vote in. Uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, too early to call. And despite how these numbers might look, our tally has Clinton in the lead while the state is too early to call. And in South Carolina, too early to call. And our tally has Trump in the lead there. So let's look at the red and blue map starting to fill in a little bit, uh, though there were very few uh, real results here at 730. See not so much a red wall as a, a kind of Louisiana shaped squiggle through the uh, <laughs> Uh, middle of the uh, country uh, and so far Hillary Clinton one called state uh, Rob Portman will be returning to the US Senate to represent the state of Ohio and wow has that race been through a lot of changes he had a huge target on his back here's the North Carolina Senate race Rachel was talking about uh, too close to call at this hour whole lot of people watching that one uh, and the US Senate composition right now is about like that but again that's that's the real moving target tonight that's going to be all over the place that senate race in north carolina has been so fascinating to watch deborah ross is the democratic challenger here she was not seen as the democrats top recruitment target for that seat that resonated i think the fact that roy blunt's been around so long actually worked hey, against senator, him in forgive this race. me i have to interrupt we have a uh, projection south carolina now on the board for donald trump uh nine electoral votes there. Let's take a look at the road to 270 in map form as South Carolina takes its place as a red state. Uh, this just came in at the end of the senator's uh, last answer there. Senator, uh, there apologize for that. But uh, this, that, this tells us the overall electoral yeah, there you go. numbers at this point. At this point, four states called for Donald Trump. Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, and West Virginia. One state called thus far for Hillary Clinton. Uh, we're about to hear from a number of states uh, at 8 o'clock, including Senator McCaskill, home state of Missouri. Uh, Senator, let me ask you to, to, to finish your thought there about Jason Kander and Roy Blunt. We have 16 states in the District of Columbia here as we approach this hour. We have a lot of more, uh, more projections as we approach this hour and uh, let's do it eight o'clock eastern time let's go outside to rockefeller plaza up the side of the building we go the state of florida we have as too close to call 29 electoral votes pennsylvania too early to call 20 electoral votes new hampshire too early to call four highly fought over electoral votes Illinois goes to the Clinton column, uh, of course, the uh, home originally of Hillary Clinton. Uh, big state, 20 electoral votes, part of the blue wall, as is New Jersey, the most densely populated state in the union with 14 electoral votes. That goes to Clinton, as does the Bay State, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 11 electoral votes. Adding to the Trump block in the south is Tennessee. We're projecting that when all the votes are counted, he will receive those 11 electoral votes. Maryland, reliably Democratic Maryland, goes to Hillary Clinton. 10 electoral votes there. Alabama, nine electoral votes going to Trump. Oklahoma out in the Midwest will go to Donald Trump, seven electoral votes. Back up we go to New England, the state of Connecticut, the nutmeg state, seven electoral votes going to Hillary Clinton. Mississippi, way down south, going to Donald, oh, I have, okay, we have awarded it to Donald Trump. Rhode Island, we keep whipsawing back up north to uh, uh, New England, and part of our story is in this whipsaw, actually, four electoral votes from the great state of Rhode Island, Delaware to Hillary Clinton, home state of Joe Biden going to Hillary Clinton, the District of Columbia, longer talk we could have about taxation without representation there, going to Hillary Clinton, the state of Missouri, we were just hearing from Senator McCaskill, we have this as too early to call with Clinton uh, leading the Okay, Trump is leading in Missouri, too early to call, with Trump out front. And in the state of Maine, too early to call, with Clinton in the early lead. 
Let's go to those other races we are watching so far. 75-66 in the race to 220 in electoral votes. It's early yet. Uh, and here is how the map looks. We've just added in some more red, and we've just added in some more blue. Uh, but a map maker or a, po a political scientist looking for a trend, looking for regions, looking for who we are as a country, you're starting to see that inkblot test. Here are the races we are still watching. Ohio, too close to call. And uh, this could be uh, a while, given the 16% raw vote in. Georgia, too close to call. Another closely watched state in the South. North Carolina, too early to call. Virginia, too early to call at this point, but a lead on Clinton's part. Um, we have a Senate race, Illinois. This one got a lot of attention just important. lately after their last important. debate. Tammy Duckworth, uh, a decorated combat veteran, uh, turning away the incumbent in this race. This is important, um, not only because of who Tammy Duckworth is, this is important because this is the Democrats ousting an incumbent Republican senator who was running for re-election. This will add to the Democratic um, total in the Senate in a way that could potentially be determinative in the end. Democrats will need four seats uh, if Hillary Clinton wins the presidency. They'll need five seats if Donald Trump wins the presidency in order to take control of the Senate chamber. Uh, Mark Kirk, um, as an incumbent, you would think would have an advantage, but he's a Republican senator in a blue state, and he ran a, uh, forgive me, I don't mean it in a mean way, he ran a bad campaign. 15-point advantage there for Trump. Steve Kornacki at the board, thanks. And we have another projection right there next to Steve in the big board. Marco Rubio and Nicole Wallace, I'm looking at you, will get to be one of the Republicans from the long process you guys went through who gets to give an acceptance speech tonight. He could be the only Republican who ran for president who gives a victory speech. Well, tonight. we got Rand Paul. Well, yeah. okay, so we've got, we may have a couple. But here, I want to bring Mark Kirk back into this because the other laboratory of sort of political strategies that we'll be able to chew on in the coming days is what was the best way to deal with Trump? Mark Kirk distanced himself from Trump immediately, and he was, was personally affected. We are back uh, here at uh, beautifully decorated Rockefeller Plaza. Uh, still early in the evening, 8, 19 Eastern time, but we have enough calls, especially in some of these Senate races. We thought you would walk us through what we know, starting with this projection, the incumbent returning, uh, well-known, longtime Republican Senator Richard Shelby of Alabama is going back to the U.S. Senate. In Connecticut, a uh, longtime, well-known Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal this is going to end up up being like a 30 point margin he's going back uh, Chris Van Holland in uh, uh, Maryland this is the Mikulski seat um, a lot of politicos are saying basically you can hang on to this for a long long time she was the senior most serving woman uh, in the US Senate when she retired and uh, Langford uh, the projected winner the incumbent in the state of Oklahoma the ruby red state of Oklahoma Democrats up one because of that Tammy Duckworth pickup uh, in Illinois. And we were just talking about North Carolina, which brings us to Steve at the board. Well, let's take a look at the vote. It's coming in now. So you uh, over the big board, we had a call while Steve was speaking. Uh, this is a hold for the GOP, Todd Young, Indiana Senate. This is a Senate seat that, um, it's very interesting on this. On This This is the, the, the Republican incumbent uh, uh, left this seat, decided to retire. That was Dan Coats. The Republicans nominated Todd Young after a little bit of a primary fight there. The Democrats did not nominate Evan Bach. In the Democratic primary process, they picked a guy named Baron Hill. After the primary was over, he stepped aside so Evan Bai could come back in because they thought that he would uh, be a shoe in basically as a household name as the person right. who formerly held this seat. But Evan Bai losing to, to Todd no, Young. Uh, we are back, uh, starting with uh, one of the battlegrounds. Virginia has moved in our projection from too early to call 
to too close to call from simply not having enough raw vote in to the raw vote we have in makes it too close to call. So we will continue to watch this. There's all kinds of internal politics and vote counting in Virginia going in uh, to making a projection there. Here's the 830 poll closing, uh, and that would be the state of Arkansas. The state of Arkansas, home to Bill Clinton and for a time Hillary Clinton, goes tonight to Donald Trump, part of the red wall. The Republicans are amassing six electoral votes. Here's the race to 270 early in the evening. Uh, Hillary Clinton, 75, 72. Um, and let's take a look at the too close to call state of Florida, 29 electoral votes. You see the margin separating 91% uh, of the vote in. Sooner or later here, uh, uh, we're going to see why uh, when the Democrats are talking to us about uh, how confident they are, if they're right or wrong, in plain English. Ohio, too close to call, 31% of the vote in. Georgia, one of the early closing states, too, too close, close to call, 16 electoral votes. Um, let's see here, Pennsylvania, too early to call. North Carolina, we have at too early to call. Missouri, too early to call, advantage Trump. Trump is in the lead. New Hampshire, too early to call those four valuable electro, uh, uh, electoral votes. Maine, too early to call, advantage Clinton thus far. Down on to home ice we go. Uh, let's take a look at how the country looks in red and blue. The expanding red out from um, the middle Atlantic states. Patches of blue, but they're valuable patches. Uh, both will be added upon. Back inside here to a big projection, a kind of big picture projection about our form of government, ah. and that is that the GOP will remain in control of the House of Representatives. That means that when the House uh, begins its next session, uh, Paul Ryan of Wisconsin certainly hopes to be uh, their leader, and further he hopes to be the Speaker of the House. And that raises a bunch of immediate questions, and it answers some questions. Obviously, tonight, sure answers a bunch. the Democrats... We are back. Uh, lots of talk at this hour, 8.53 Eastern, seven minutes away. Uh, Pennsylvania, 20 electoral votes, too close to call. 2% of the raw vote in, 10% of the raw vote in in New Hampshire, too close to call. Both of those were too early to call. They've now both been shifted to too close. And uh, let's come inside and look at the Senate races in both of those states. This is McGinty Toomey in Pennsylvania. And we do have the Burr race. Ah, okay. New Hampshire Senate. Kelly Ayotte, the uh, incumbent. Let's see here. 10% of the race in. Too close to call. Difference uh, separ separated by 7,000 votes. We've got too close to call there, both in the Pennsylvania Senate race between Pat Toomey and Katie McGinty, and too close to call in the New Hampshire Senate race there between the incumbent Republican Kelly Ayotte and Maggie Hassan. 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, here are the polls closing. All in gold. There's the list to the right. Let's go outside and begin this thing. Uh, we are, here are the, the states we are watching at 9 Eastern. It's a long list. Get ready. Michigan, too close to call. Arizona, too early to call. 11 electoral votes. Wisconsin, too early to call. Colorado, too early to call. Texas has been awarded to Donald Trump. Texas stays red, as does Kansas, no wobble there. Sportsman Paradise, Louisiana, eight electoral votes projected to Donald Trump. Nebraska projected to Donald Trump. The state of New York, reliably blue, and its 29 electoral votes stays with Hillary Clinton. North Dakota, Trump to go with it. South Dakota, Trump. In the Rockies, Wyoming, three electoral votes. Trump, Minnesota, 
too close to call hmm. at this hour. New Mexico, and this was fascinating to see the action out there. Too early, Clinton leading. Let's look at our bar graph and look at the only numbers that really matter tonight, and that is the race to 270. And right now, Donald Trump is leading that 137 to 104. Donald Trump more than halfway there to 270 if he is going to hit 270. So here's what we're looking at in terms of battlegrounds. Florida, too close. Ohio, too close to call. Georgia, one of the early closes, too close to call. North Carolina, uh, a genuine battleground. I'm sorry, Georgia, too close to call. New Hampshire, too close to call. Virginia, too close to call. Missouri, too early to call. And Maine, too early to call. Clinton ahead. Interesting. We've only got about 4% of the vote in in Missouri and in Maine. That gives you a hint as to why those are too early to call. But the call is not early. It's close in Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, Georgia. Um, a, a lot of uncertainty right now. And Trump really locking up the traditional red states. The Democratic pipe dream that Texas will someday go purple, if not blue. That pipe dream stays in the pipe uh, for another cycle. There is Contiguity. the red wall. Look at the contiguity. The contiguousness, the contiguousness of, the, uh, of the Republican support in the Electoral College, all except for that one South Carolina, all connected. That is the red wall of the GOP from north to south and almost from east to west. We're waiting for the western time zones, obviously. Yeah. Uh, back inside here in the studio, we have a Senate call to make, and we have two people here at the desk who know and work for this guy. Uh, John McCain, who had a primary challenge, uh, who will be 86 years old at the end of his new six-year Senate term, uh, has been re-elected to the Senate. Steve Schmidt, Nicole Wallace, Steve, you first. Well, I, look, I, I think thrilled about it. Great news. I remember when you talk about John McCain being... And they are being heard tonight. Uh, 10 o'clock hour is uh, five seconds away. Here we go. States here. This In is be gold. There they are. Here are the closings this hour. It is 10 p.m. In the state of Iowa. Our call for right now is too close to call. In the state of Nevada, our call for this hour is too close to call. In the state of Utah, and remember, favorite son in the race, three-way, too early to call, Clinton, Trump, McMullen. In the state of Montana, the Big Sky State goes to Donald Trump. So that red band, that red wall continues its trek west with the time zones. Here's the electoral race, 140-104. Here is the electoral, here are the too close to call states, Florida of the battlegrounds, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Georgia, Michigan, all of these too close to call, North Carolina, 81% in. Virginia. We've talked a lot about Virginia this last Look hour. How close. <laughs> Minnesota. 12% of the raw vote in. New Hampshire. And Maine. Too early to call. Here we go. Arizona. 11 electoral votes. Missouri. Trump in the lead. Too early to call. Wisconsin. Colorado and New Mexico. Let's pan down to the ice and bring up the map. Blue and red on Democracy Plaza. Here's your country so far. The states we've been able to call as the time zones head from east to west. You can see the big states we are waiting for. Utah is such an interesting uh, case study, and not even a case study. So Utah is its own case, its own standalone politics and dynamics this year. If Evan McMullen is able to win 
um, the state of Utah tonight. And our, again, our call right now is that Utah is too early to call, and it is a three-way race between Trump, Clinton, and McMullen. If he wins Utah, that would be the first time a third-party candidate or an independent candidate gets electoral votes since George Wallace, right, 1968? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I mean, if he can actually win that state, there's obviously Evan McMillan is not going to win the presidency, but if he... Ooh, we have a call. Uh, this projection, New Mexico is going to Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Remember the hubbub when uh, Donald Trump uh, showed up in New Mexico a few days before the election? Everyone said, what do they know? What do they know? Both parties, what do they know? Here's the uh, electoral map, 140-109, with New Mexico now. Five the electoral votes there, yeah. That will give them a patch of blue to the west of Texas. So there's your map. Mr. Kornacki, please continue. Apologies. No problem. I understand. So we're talking... Hang on, I got a projection. NBC News is projecting that when all the votes are counted, Donald Trump will be the winner in Missouri. Ten electoral votes, another piece in the Midwest, and another patch of red. The race to 270 looks like this, 150, 109. Let's look at Missouri on the map. Thank you. Steve Kornacki, can I ask you one impressionistic question in terms of what you've been watching tonight? No, I can't. Oh. You there, I'm Steve? here. Yes, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are back. Uh, we have a major call coming out of the vote. We'll try to get it up there, and it is Ohio. Donald Trump, the projected winner in the state of Ohio. 18 electoral votes. A hugely important piece of real estate where that comparison is concerned. 168, 109 in the race to 270. Here's where it looks like, uh, this is where it looks like as a uh, color filling in the red alongside Indiana to the west of Pennsylvania, down on through West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and so on. Ohio and Iowa had been the two traditional swing states that the Clinton campaign felt like were, uh, or the Trump campaign felt like were most within their grasp. Iowa and Ohio consistently have been polling in ways that have been favorable to Donald Trump. Obviously, Ohio is the archetypal uh, battleground, but I think everybody's been feeling like it was leaning toward him. Still, that's got to shake the Clinton confidence even more than these other close races do right now. I just, I do want to point out one thing about uh, North Carolina, which we are watching so intently right now. Again, North Carolina is one of these states that is too close to call, and it has been so for a very long time. Even right now, with 83% of the vote in, it is still too close to call Trump in the lead. But I, we were talking a little bit earlier on about the other two big ticket races races in North Carolina. One of them, this Senate race, Richard Burr, incumbent Republican senator, try trying to hold on to his seat against Deborah Ross, who ran a good campaign against him. Burr is now the projected winner of that seat. He will hold on to that seat. The other big ticket item in North Carolina is the governor's race. And it's been fascinating to watch these governor's numbers come in out of this governor's race in North Carolina. Right now, again, with 84% of the vote up, it is too early to call too early to call in North Carolina, but you see these guys deadlock 49-49. So if you're looking for sort of advice as to how North Carolina is going to go in the presidential, that Senate race may make you think that Donald Trump is going to pull it out. This governor's race uh, gives us no information because this is as close as they come. Yeah, starkly, you have to win Ohio if you're a Republican. It's a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition. Winning Ohio does put him at the edge now, possibly winning the election. However, I do think we're going to see a pattern which is traditional. Uh, all right. Uh, speaking of Colorado, let's do some of these Senate races because the first one on our list, we've been trying to fall back and catch up with these Senate races this evening, is Michael Bennett uh, returning from Colorado. There will be um, Democratic in incumbent there. inevitable talk about Michael Bennett. Um, 
uh, joining leadership, I think, in, in the years to come. Uh, a very popular figure. Uh, and, and more about Colorado as a state after this. Um, the uh, leader of the Democrats uh, projected, predicted, people guess it's going to be led by Chuck Schumer of New York, uh, who uh, had an easy time returning to the Senate. We're just going to go through these. Uh, Jerry Moran in Kansas. Uh, John Hoven, North Dakota. Getting these as you're seeing them. John Thune going back to the Senate from South Dakota. He had an interesting uh, history with uh, Donald Trump during this campaign. John Boozman, Arkansas. Uh, Georgia, it's going to be Johnny Isaacson. In Iowa, the longtime KG Republican veteran Chuck Grassley going back. And uh, Mike Lee, the popular Republican, is going back from Utah. Here's the Senate again. Uh, Democrats with one net gain, but this is early. Yeah, but the, the, the Senate races that are outstanding right now are a bunch of fascinating ones. In Missouri, I believe our characterization in Missouri with Roy Blunt trying to return to the Senate, the Republican, against a Democratic challenger named Jason Kander. I believe our characterization there is that is still too early to call. I that was too uh, early, yeah. In Missouri, we do have a presidential call that Missouri has gone to Donald Trump at the presidential level, but this Senate race right now is still too early to call. Um, also, in terms of too close to call, Senate races. Big names. Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania against Katie McGinty, the Democrat. That's too close to call. In New Hampshire, the Kelly Ayotte race against the Democratic governor, Maggie Hassan. That is too close to call. Um, and in Nevada, uh, we've got Joe Heck, the Democrat, excuse me, the Republican up against Catherine Cortez Masto, who's the Democrat trying to take Harry Reid's seat there. We have also a, too close. Excuse me. We have a, we have a major projection. In the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, the projected winner is Hillary Clinton. Hillary Casey Clinton's Hunt. campaign, breathing a sigh of relief there. <laughs> sure, sigh of relief. And, you know, we were talking earlier, and I have this horse talking to me about, and, and forgive me for using a house race as an example here, uh, but News Barbara Comstock, you. she's... Checking that race, you're talking about this Virginia 10, Virginia Barbara 10. Comstock, Comstock, seen as a bellwether race. Mm -hmm. yes. If she is the projected winner in that race right now, it looks like the margin is eight points in her favor. Okay. Louanne yeah. Bennett was the Democrat mm -hmm. there. Everybody yeah. thought that was going to be a squeaker. It's not. You know, the one of the Republican incumbents in the House who was thought to be endangered in this year of Donald Trump, who definitely distanced himself from Donald Trump, was Carlos Corbello, the Republican Cuban-American representative in Florida, uh, in Florida District 26. Carlos Corbello has also won his seat tonight. He will also be returning to, the, to, to Congress. And so uh, we have another projection so just as we were going to sneak away to a break. We have another projection, and that is that in the state of Colorado, when all the votes are counted, Hillary Clinton will pick up nine electoral votes there. As we look at the race to 270, here's the bar chart, 168 to 131. Let's uh, see what this looks like in blue and red. It certainly starts a vertical for the Democrats out west. Uh, they have a known vertical in California along the Pacific Ocean, but uh, Chris Matthews, listening to those, uh, our, our colleagues in the other studio, interesting. Look, uh, there's no other word for it. That this is a surprise. And uh, especially on nights like this, we have all vowed to rename Michigan temporarily just by saying it three times. Michigan, 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 given its importance tonight. Here are our 11 p.m. poll closings. There they are in gold. We've gone all the way out west. And here we go up the side of the building in the Golden State in California. The projected winner is Hillary Clinton. Note the electoral vote, votes, 55. In the state of Washington, Hillary Clinton, the projected winner. In the state of Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, Hillary Clinton, the projected winner. In the state of Hawaii, four electoral votes, Hillary Clinton, the projected winner. In Idaho, interesting race, as we've been saying, Donald Trump, 
the predicted winner for electoral votes. Here is the bar graph to 270. <laughs> Here is the math. Right now, Hillary Clinton 209 to Donald Trump's 172. More on that as we continue. Here are the states we continue to watch. Too close to call, and these are some big ticket items. Florida, Pennsylvania, Georgia, one of the first states to close tonight. Here we still are. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. North Carolina, 15 electoral votes. Minnesota with 10. Iowa, still too close to call. Nevada, still too close to call. Ditto New Hampshire. And the state of Maine, which we have moved from too early to too close, with not even half the raw vote in. Now, the list of states we are characterizing too early to call. Arizona, Wisconsin, and Utah. Hmm. Let's take a look at the reds and the blues down on home ice. In this road to 270, Unmistakable color patterns, but a West Coast bulwark with this 11 p.m. Eastern time poll closing for Hillary Clinton. It's interesting. At this we, poll closing, this is the first one where we've had all of the races called. We had no too, clo no too close, no too early in the races that just closed right now at 11 o'clock. Also, no surprises. Had any of these been a surprise, it would have been seismic. But yes, Idaho is going to be red. The whole West Coast is going to be blue including uh, the island state of Hawaii. We only have one state left to close now, which is Alaska. Uh, that's the only state outstanding in terms of its poll closing. We're just waiting on states that are too early uh, and too close to call. Let's go to a Senate call on the wall here in the studio, and that's Ron that's Johnson big one. going oh. back for the Republicans. The Democrats were quite confident that Mr. Feingold sure. Uh, sure. would be going back to the U.S. Senate. And uh, Chris, what's the quote you've been using all night? But you can't go home again. You can't go home again. I think Feingold would have been a big surprise. I think historically he would have been the first person to defeat the person who beat him when he had the office. He would have been. That's right. And But I have to tell you, as, as in Bernie Stan, in Bernieville, a Vermont Republican has just been elected governor. Well, maybe that's how so you have <laughs> I just think that there's, a, there's an urge for... Yeah, Paul Ryan uh, has been reelected and he has uh, uh, addressed supporters. He, of course, will be returning as of now as the Speaker of the House, although it's going to be a very uncertain future for him uh, should Donald Trump. Uh, That's very We have a to projection. Donald right. Trump is being awarded North Carolina. Whoa. Mm. Well, that's a pitch. Just came in 15 electoral votes. This makes all kinds of different paths even more interesting. There's the electoral race, 209-187. Here it is in color. We're going to have to start talking about the, the, the deer tracks again, the paths <laughs> to do 70 at this point. It's still contiguous. It's still contiguous. It's all red together. Though. Well, that's yeah, if you're going to hike it, that's useful. Together. But in terms of who's going to be president, I want to know the numbers. Together. Hey, Lawrence O'Donnell, I want to hear from James Carville. We've got James Carville. And Call the state of Florida. What we are terming the apparent winner, Donald Trump. In the state of Florida, 29 electoral votes, the apparent winner terminology. Here is the electoral math, 216 Trump, 209 Clinton. The race for 270, here's how it plays out visually. So much talk about the paths to 270 who merely wanted Florida and right now, it, who needed it. We have another call back to back. Utah, Trump, six electoral votes. The projected winner in Utah. Here we go, 222, 209. Back down to the ice we go for the depiction in color. Red and blue. Well, still connects. And the remaining gray. 
in terms of the um, swing states tonight and how they have gone. Um, we've got Hillary Clinton, just in terms of swing states and battlegrounds tonight, prevailing in Virginia, in Colorado, in New Mexico. We've got Donald Trump prevailing, according to NBC News projections. Uh, it, Donald Trump prevailing in North Carolina, Ohio, and Florida. I need to interrupt with another one. Trump wins Iowa, the projected winner in Iowa. We've had a flurry of projections here. Six more electoral votes for Donald Trump this evening, 228 to 209. Uh, again, the number that you're going for here is 270. That's the number of electoral votes that you need in order to uh, win the presidency. It's too early for okay. me to think about any, anything we, like we that. we got to call him in. Excuse I'm me, just, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me. Uh, in the I, state I, I, of Georgia, one of the earliest to close, one of the latest to be called. Donald Trump, the projected victor there, 16 electoral votes. A lot of talk that the Democrats would uh, be able to convert that. As you see our chart, 244, 209 in the electoral votes. And down on the board, it is a continued march of Republican red sweeping the American South. Chris. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, you still on? Okay, we lost him. Well, there you go. That map of red is continuous. It's contiguous. It <laughs> let's, let's go out to Nevada, uh, where Harry Reid is vacating is. his oh, Senate you know. seat, seat, and where the Democrats had the chance to have the first Latina woman in the U.S. Senate, and they appear to have done so. It was tight all the way. Joe Heck. Uh, his fortunes kind of rose and fell, and tonight they fell just enough for the Democrats to hold a net hold of this seat. We're going to take a break. We'll have more of our live coverage when we come back. We are back and we wanted to just take stock of the states that have yet to be called. Pennsylvania and its 20 electoral votes still too close to call. Michigan add, is also on that list, as is Arizona, still too close to call. Uh, upper Midwest includes Wisconsin. Uh, we just had a projection. This is a call inter oh. interrupting our list. Hillary Clinton is the projected winner in Nevada with its six electoral votes. Here is um, where that leaves us. 244, 215. Trump over Clinton. And here's what the map looks like with the pickup of Nevada for the, for the Clinton campaign. You see the coastal argument people have been making. Um, it's uh, pretty hard to deny that we are a coastal blue uh, country. Uh, Steve Kornacki has been looking at, uh, the state of Pennsylvania has been looking. We're now arrived at the 1 a.m. mark here on the East Coast, and that means the polls have closed in the state of Alaska. We have this to say about Alaska, and that is that it is too early to call between <laughs> Clinton and Trump. Let us, however, uh, look again at the electoral vote totals. Here, our bar graph on the side of the building now stands, as we've been chronicling all night, 244 Trump, 215 Clinton. Uh, in the balance is the red and blue. Uh, and this national map that we've been staring at all evening, going back and forth, starting in the east and going to the west with the time zones. Still outstanding, the states in gray, which we will now display, the states that are too close to call. Pennsylvania, too close to call, separated by 46,000 and change. Michigan, the difference of about 60,000 votes, too close to call. Arizona, out in the
the desert southwest, around 60,000 vote difference. Wisconsin, the Dairy Belt, 84,225 with 87% in. Minnesota with uh, just about 80% of the vote in. And finally, New Hampshire, too close to call, 82%. Look at the difference. <laughs> You think your vote doesn't matter? You think your vote doesn't matter? <laughs> 96 votes between the two of them. Yeah, I said finally. I, I, I uh, almost forgot the great state of Maine, which has been a, a pitched battle all night with 81% of the vote in. 17,000 votes separate four split electoral votes from Maine. Uh, and that's where we have it, 1 a.m. Eastern time. Yeah. We have a call on the Missouri Senate race. It's really attracted so much attention. The Democrats thought they could eke out a pickup this race, as I was saying earlier, on pure technical grounds. Probably gave us the craftiest ad of, of this campaign. The gentleman on the right, Jason Kander, the Democrat who has gone down in defeat, uh, showed that he could assemble an AR-15 blindfolded as countless members of the U.S. Armed Forces and law enforcement can do. Uh, but it was about guns as an issue in this race. And one ad does not a Senate race or a wave election make. And so uh, it's, a, um, it's a net hold for the Republicans. But uh, Mr. Blunt, the uh, veteran Republican from Missouri, always an interesting political state, is going back to the Senate. Steve Kornacki, having forged an alliance with his technology, huh. is back at the board. Steve, let's record keep on this Senate race in Pennsylvania. Oh, We've please. talked about Pennsylvania so much, and the incumbent is going back. Pat Toomey. Chris Matthews is shaking I'm his head because, because of all the predictions I got from the experts up there. Uh, to me, but I did get a good call from, and James knows Pennsylvania very well. He's won many races up there. Uh, that uh, people like Rendell, the governor, would say, who works with us now, said that uh, that uh, Hillary would have to win by four. Maine, we we have a projection. Maine. It is being projected by NBC News, will be won by Hillary Clinton when all the votes are cast. Three out of the four electoral votes. So that means we are not projecting the separate congressional district that... No. Okay. <laughs> Donald Trump gets one. Ah, okay. So you'll Got note it. his total has grown by one. What a fascinating and confusing and so to be state. clear, yes. of the uh, to be clear, yeah. Maine one of the congr one of the electoral votes in Maine goes to Trump. The remaining electoral votes yes. in Maine go to Hillary Clinton. We're working on a new graphic that says she gets most of them. Yes. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Um, we haven't explained our uh, decision desk, but this is important. We'll get to that after we show you this decision. Lisa Murkowski, the incumbent. That's a net hold in Alaska. And here's what that means. The larger graphic, uh, the Senate at this hour, Democrats plus one, Republican control of the Senate. This is what we've been talking about all night. If Trump goes on to victory and the White House, uh, if this holds as we believe it will, as our early, early evening projection of the House, Republican control holds as we think it will, all three branches. And so as Chris Matthews and others have been talking about tonight, those people who were motivated to cast their vote uh, for the Supreme Court, among other issues. Uh, and here's another projection, Alaska. We are projecting when all the votes are counted, we'll go to Donald Trump, three electoral votes. You think three electoral votes, small peanuts don't matter? Look at what they do to your total when they push you up to push you up to 248 versus 218. A word about our um, national map. Here's the reds and the blues. And notice that landmass out in the Pacific with the Aleutian Islands trailing. Um, Alaska has gone to Donald Trump. Hawaii has gone to Hillary Clinton, 218, 248. 
Can we take the shot of the decision desk? This is important. I know we've had an erosion in trust in our institutions, uh, and uh, I'm just asking you to believe me. Our decision desk in this building is uh, they take place in their own uh, world. They forward to being your president. And hopefully at the end of two years or three years or four years or maybe even eight years, you will say, so many of you worked so hard for us, but you will say that, you will say that that was something that you were really were very proud to do. And, and I can thank you very much. You do well. We always talk about in Pennsylvania, the collar counties. These are the four counties that surround suburban Philadelphia, voter rich, swing state voters, uh, Delaware County, Montgomery County, Bucks County, Chester County. She won those counties. She swept those counties. Not only that, but Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Uh, they know how to get the vote out for their uh, candidates across the board, including Ron Johnson, the senator who had an upset victory winning uh, his seat back. Very few thought that could happen uh, today. You are watching MSNBC. Just minutes ago, NBC called the state of Minnesota. Hillary Clinton taking it with 10 electoral college votes. It does not change the outcome. The apparent winner, according to NBC, Hillary Clinton in the state of Minnesota. I am, of course, not just looking at the map. I'm looking at the clock because we are one minute away from the stock market opening right here in New York City. I am joined by my colleague. We'll have a unified Republican government. NBC News projects that the control of the House of Representatives remain in Republican hands where the House balance of power stands right now. Let's put it up there on the screen. 238 Republican, 193 Democrat. There are still, obviously, uh, looks like five uncounted seats. Good old California. We'll get them. It always takes a few more days to get all of California's vote in. And the Republicans will retain control of the U.S. Senate. Republicans currently hold 51 seats. It could grow by one. Louisiana. The race for that Republican-held seat is going to go to a runoff, as it always does, top two in that jungle primary. It is Republican, sometimes he's been other parties, parties, but it's Republican John Kennedy and Democrat Foster Campbell, who will face each other this December. By the way, this actually could be oddly a race, because the Republican Party has never been crazy about Kennedy. This, is, this could be kind of a mess down there, and only the way Louisiana does races down there. God love them. Also, where competitive Senate races, Democrats did win. So coattails matter. Democrat Tammy Duckworth defeated Republican Senator Mark Kirk in Illinois. Hillary Clinton won out there. Catherine Cortez Masto, Masto held Harry Reid's seat in Nevada. Hillary won there. And although the presidential contest in New Hampshire has yet to be called by NBC, NBC News projects now that Democrat Maggie Hassan is the apparent winner over Senator Kelly Ayotte. But in the states that Clinton... State of California sending its Attorney General Kamala Harris to the Senate. Harris was an Indian mother and Jamaican father, will be the first Indian American and the second African American woman to serve. Harris defeated fellow Democrat Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez to replace the retiring Barbara Boxer. California Republican Daryl Issa tonight is sweating out his race that's so close there are enough outstanding mail in ballots and provisional ballots to determine the result, so it's not been called. Democrats did manage to turf out New Jersey Republican Scott Garrett. You might remember him making waves when he said he stopped giving money to the Republican Party because the party had gone too soft on gays. Scott Garrett will now be free to try to find a gay-free corner of New Jersey to retire to because he's going to be replaced in Congress by a Democrat named Joshua Gottheimer. In Florida, uh, forever Congressman John Micah lost his seat to Stephanie Murphy. She's the first Vietnamese American ever elected to Congress. Former Florida Governor Charlie Crist, he's going to be headed to Congress as a Democrat. He beat Republican uh, David Jolly, who was going to run for Marco Rubio's Senate seat, had Marco Rubio not come back from the dead to take it back himself. Uh, in Arizona, Maricopa County. And NBC News is now calling Doug Jones the apparent winner in this special Senate election in Alabama. That's NBC's call at this hour, uh, 13 minutes before 11, the apparent winner in Alabama. And uh, uh, Rachel, we can expect the congratulatory presidential tweet any moment. Yes, I'm sure. And the, and, the, and the peace be with you. And we are all Americans first. And we look forward to reaching across party lines. It's going to be nice when I wake up. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we shall see, I mean, how the president reacts to this. Obviously, this is a loss for the president.